Hello, welcome to another video. So this time we're going to talk about vertex animation textures with particles. So in Houdini, I already have this setup. So this is my setup. So when I press play, I have sort of like this orb with particles uh, rotating around itself. So this is my result. So I want this result now and bring this into Unity with the vertex animation tools. This is a quite basic result. You can make something more complex. And I'm going to first go over the setup here before jumping into unity here. So my setup starts with a sphere. So this is my sphere and I'm gonna scatter points where I actually would like to have uh, particles be spawning or emitting. And I will also rotate this. So over time, the points are actually rotating. I also did some time shifting here, uh, but interesting more here is actually the trail node and I'm gonna set this to compute velocity. So each point holds a certain velocity where it's actually going into. Then in the pop network, this is then actually used to create an effect like this. So it's simple, it's quite basic uh, particle animation here by just using the trail node for velocity. Then in the node itself, we import our positions, so our uh, first contacts here, so our, so our points. And I'm also gonna here use a pop color for coloring this based on how long the particle lives. So they go from this bluish to this uh, pink red color. So we have that particle now. So with that result, uh, I would like to actually make this a bit more loopable. So we're gonna place the make loop node and it will now look like this. So it's actually more loopable. So with this placed, uh, we could for, for example, play around with the P scale, but you don't have to use that. You can also here have a wrangle playing around with the P scale which is important for later because it will actually also be used in the vertex animation tools uh, to set a scale of each point. So this is actually my output. So this is what I'm gonna use in my tools as output or as input for then creating uh, textures. But what will actually happen is on each point, there will actually be a geometry copied. So for example, we will actually have a certain geometry. So in this case, I just Took a sphere as example. So we will have a geometry copied on that. So I will explain a bit more about that. Uh, and then this is actually the result you see. So we will actually also have that scaling. So I will scale down also some of these particles over time. So with this setup now, let's go into our output here. So if you don't have that, you can just create new uh, view window and you can switch here to output. Now with that here, let's type in vertex animation tools. And here now we have to set the CRUD settings. So first of all, let's set our mode. So we are working with particle sprites. So switches to particles and we are using Unity engine. So we're gonna set this to Unity. Then my number of frames goes from one to 100, uh, which is good enough for now. Uh, if you want more, you can increase this. Then we also have our input geometry. So what do I need to input in this? So we're gonna press this icon here and I'm gonna go to my particle setup and I'm going to say output of the sprites. So this is now seen as my input. Now let's go to the settings here and we have some specific settings for uh, this mode, so the particle mode. And what is interesting mainly here is actually the shape that will be copied on the points. So by default, it will actually add a square card. So just a simple plane on each point. So each point will have a plane. If you don't want that, you can actually change this to something else like a triangle or a hexagon. So this might be useful as you could see, like if you, for example, take the hexagon shape, it will increase the triangle count, but there will be less transparency overdraw. Uh, so that can be interesting to actually change uh, the shape that will be copied on them. Now we can actually also input a custom shape. So that is where custom cards come useful. So you can enable custom shape and then we can go into our network here and actually create something custom like this, for example. So we can create, for example, this moon or this uh, star shape, and we can use this as my particle shape. So we could tweak this as you want to. So again, you can press the icon here to find them and you can here use custom cards, for example, and then it will actually use the custom cards. Uh, we can also here use the attribute I shape ID to define uh, what are different pieces. So if I go here, so I, there are actually two shapes and by assigning a attribute here uh, with shape ID and weight, we can control 
uh, how many pieces there are and how often they should appear with the weight. So that's just quite interesting if you need something specific. Now for this demo, I'm just going to leave it by default and just use a square card. Further down here, we have some more settings uh, for outputs. First of all, here is asking you if your input of the jump tree is being cached. So I'm not really caching my data here. So I'm not going to enable that. So it's recommended if you're doing something more complex to actually cache out data, of course. Then here, my texture format will be HDR and it will be this file type as output. So you can change these things as you want to, but I would recommend you leaving, leaving them by default here. You can have some more specific data export here. So certain spare colors, or if I want the velocity of the points or something else, we can export that as well. We can also furthermore have our, our targeted texture width. So this is aiming for this width. You can change this, but by default, it will actually do a good job of choosing uh, something correctly that fits. Then we're going to go to our inputs. So this is what we're going to input in the tool. So by default, it just needs a position. So if I have any points in my world with a position that can be my input, we can have some op optional data, like for example, the P scale or color or other data can be also inputted here. Uh, so this is just sort of like helping you a bit with what data you should use for input. Then we have our export settings. So where do I want to save this? So I'm just going to rename this to Unity uh, Sprites. And then also we have our asset naming, which is actually referencing now to the node name. So if I change the node name, it will also change the asset name. So let's uh, say uh, Sprite Simulation. And then we can add also a suffix to our file. So this can be useful if you want to include the frame count or the FPS, which can be useful to know. So if you want to, for example, know the FPS of Houdini, we can go all the way down here and we can see our FPS here. So currently I'm using 24, which is the default. So if you want to have something at 60 FPS, you can also change that in Houdini and then it will export something that is at 60 FPS. Further, we have our actual output results. So we have a geometry file, position file, uh, and colors. So you can change that if you want to, but this is the default result. And we'll also output a Unity material file, which will be useful. Then furthermore, we have our advanced settings. Not going to touch uh, them. We also have the target settings. We're not going to use them. And again, if you need some help or with the package, you can click this button uh, to get some more documentation. So this is currently my result. So again, I've been actually mainly using the default values and we're just going to press render now. So when it is done rendering, you should have this result. So we will have a geometry file. We have our textures, so our position and the color. And we have our Unity fi file, which is the material, which will be very useful in Unity. Now switching here to Unity, we want to import all the files that we just created. So here I'm just going to simply drag and drop these in my Unity project. You could also decide to directly export from Houdini to your Unity project if you want to. You can also just drag and drop it uh, and the files will then be imported. Now we also need to set import settings. So let's go to our geometry and we're going to click our icon here for presets and we're going to use our vertex animation uh, Houdini settings. So click on that and press apply, of course. Then we're going to do the same for our textures. So select all of our textures. We're going to press the preset icon and we're going to use our vertex animations, uh, HDR ones, double click and press apply. So of course the HDR preset was actually referencing here to our texture format, which was also set to HDR. So important to remember that that is done. And we can now go to our material and we're going to set up our material. So we're going to press the icon here. So it's locked, grab our texture. So we're going to grab our color and our position. So make sure you're so make sure you're putting that in the right uh, slot here, and let's grab our geometry now, which should just be a bunch of these square planes as we set the mode to a square plane, and now let's apply our material to that. So we have the exact same result that I had in Houdini now in Unity. The important thing to notice is by default, uh, if I'm not interacting with my viewport, it's actually not going to update into my scene. So if I actually move around, uh, you can see it's updating as it should be. So let me move this here into my camera space um, and then let's press play. 
So when I press play, everything is placed nicely. And, and again, it's the same result that we had in Houdini now in Unity. So we have the particle looping and also scaling uh, these planes over time based on uh, like fading out or fading in so that all works nicely. So we have a cool result here. Now again, there are some options you can play around with with the shader, like the playback speed. We can set the FPS. We can have auto playback disabled if you want to trigger this on a certain thing. Um, so yeah, so you can play around with these settings. Uh, important is actually to disable certain toggles that are not needed. So here, for example, in the shader variant switches, if you're not using, for example, color, disable them because it will be actually uh, making the shader some a bit lighter. So disable things that you're not using is recommended. Uh, also here for your particles. So mine, my particles are actually scaled quite nicely. So they're not too big or too small. Uh, but in case your particle is like extremely large or extremely small, we can actually here overwrite the scale of that. So we can either make it even smaller, make them like really thin, or if you want them to be bigger, you can make them like this. So they are a bit bigger. So you can even uh, in here uh, tweak with that too. You could play around with that, make some nice, interesting results. So again, this is just an example. You can make something more complex, more interesting, uh, but we already have it perfectly working. So some simulation that we baked in Houdini can now also be used here in Unity. Now, the last thing that I want to mention here is the shaders. So the shader here uses the shader from the package. We can click on edit if we want to edit the shader. So we'll actually bring up the shader here. But before modifying the shader, I have I heavily recommend you making a copy. So, so if we go here to our packages, uh, we have our shaders. So we're going to go here to our shaders and we're going to actually then uh, make a duplicate here. So it's quite important that you actually make a duplicate. So we're not like overriding our main settings here. So furthermore, you could play around with these shaders. Uh, important here is that we actually here have our main node. We're sort of like doing the main calculation of the vertex animations. And this is then directly inputted in the vertex here. Now, to get the result then here into sort of like the fragment, we need to use this uh, interpolator. So the color to fragment is actually referencing here to that. And this will then interpolate that. So we can actually use this here in our base color. And it's also the same here if I want to use a certain texture with custom UVs that we had in Houdini. Instead of using here the a texture UV output, we actually need to use the texture UV from the vertex and then use that uh, with that interpolator here. So this is again referencing back to this. So we get the correct information to use. So you can actually properly use a texture here. The main thing I recommend you doing here is making a copy if you want to tweak these values. So that was it for this video. So I hope you enjoyed this video. So we brought a Houdini particle simulation into Unity. I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.